one more test to wrap things up. How many tests have we had so far? Increasing, decreasing, first derivative test, concavity test, and now the second derivative test. Okay, what is this? Well, it's going to involve second derivatives. What are we testing for? Turns out we're actually testing for local maxes and mins. We've got a new way using the second derivative to test for local maxes and mins. Okay, interesting. How does this work? Here are the steps. Say f prime of c equals zero. Right, so those are like half of the critical numbers or half of the way you find them, right? Where the first derivative equals zero. So let's say you know all of the critical numbers from the first derivative. You can then go on. If, I've got a blank there for us to fill in. Well, okay, let's see this. If the second derivative at C is positive, then the point C F of C is a local what? And now it's tempting to say, oh, positive. I know the answer. But wait a second. Here's what's going on. Let's put these two together. The first derivative is 0. The second derivative is positive. Hmm, OK, so second derivative is positive means concave up, right? Concave up. Well, does concave up have a local max or a local min? It actually has a local min. Okay, so we know at C it's concave up. We also know at C the first derivative is zero. So, you know, with just this information, we don't know where we're at on that, con on that concave up. But with this second information here, we know, oh, well, if the first derivative is zero, that means this. So it's, it's curving up and it has a horizontal tangent line. Well, that is definitely a local min. What if the second derivative at C was negative? We can probably guess. Then the point CF of C, well, if it's negative, that means it's concave down. And if also we know the second derivative is 0, then it must be the point at the top on that concave down because we know the tangent line is horizontal. And, well, of course, that's a local max. So we get into this rhythm of Positive means, you know, first derivative positive means increasing. Uh, second derivative positive means concave up, right? And it all kind of jives. And then we get here and it's, and it's opposite, but it makes sense when you draw it. There is a third possibility that if you were to plug C into the second derivative, you might get zero. If the second derivative equals zero, then we just say we don't know. Uh, the test is inconclusive. It might be a local min. It might be a local max. But we can't say for sure with this test. Okay. Let's see an example. We are going to find local maxes and mins using the second derivative test. Here's the function. We'll just keep it simple this time. Use the second derivative test to find all local maxes and mins r of x equals 1 plus 6x squared minus 4x to the third. Now, the way you go about this test, you know, the test seems, um, you know, it makes sense. But how do you actually apply it? It doesn't have that step-by-step -step nature. Okay, so let's break it down. The first thing we need are those c's, those criticals. Let's find all of the x values where r prime of x equals 0. Okay, So of course, well, we'll need a derivative. right? That's kind of the joke amongst students. If you're not sure what the first step is in a calculus class, it's probably to take a derivative. Not always. Be careful, but, but a lot of times, yeah. OK, so we got our derivative here, 12x minus 12x squared. OK. Let's set that equal to 0. You're going to see some work over here. Ignore that for now. 
So we're setting equal to zero. Let's factor 12x. Uh, factor out 12x. That would leave behind 1 minus x. Perfect. We know these two criticals, x equals 0, x equals 1. Now, these are the only ones we're going to look at. We're, we're not going to consider where the derivative does not exist. So we just don't do that for the second derivative test. Okay. What we're going to do, we're going to plug each of these into the second derivative, right? So we know this where the first derivative is 0. So what's happening with the concavity there? I think, okay, well, we'll need... We'll need the second derivative, so going back to that, second derivative would be 12 minus 24x. And then, let's come over here and you'll see the rest of the work. All right, if we plug in each, so if I plug 0 into the second derivative, I get 12, right? 12 minus 24 times 0. And as we look at that, we think, okay, what's the big deal? Well, is that positive or negative? Well, it's positive. So is 0 a local max or a local min? So we know the first derivative is 0. We know the second derivative is positive. So that means it's concave up. That's a local min. Concave up. Okay, let's do the same thing for 1. Let's plug 1 into the second derivative. 12 minus 24 times 1, negative 12. So the 12 doesn't matter. It's the fact that it's negative. So that means it's concave down. And the first derivative is 0, so this must be a local max. So to finish the problem off, we need the entire ordered pair. We know that 0 is a local min, 1 is at a local max, but what are their y values? Well, that's when we plug them in to the original function. So r of 0 is 1. r of 1, what would that be? r of 1, 1 plus 6 minus 4, 7 minus 4 is 3. r of 1 equals 3. So we know there's a local max. I'll just list that one first at 1, 3. And there's a local min at 0, 1. We got the answer. With second derivatives, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Well, that is it. Uh, there is going to be a video just kind of reflecting on these examples in Desmos. Look for that, and good luck in homework.